Hi everybody. So welcome to week one of your biopsychology catch-up series and we're going to get stuck in with the central nervous system. So in this session you're going to cover the nervous system specification. So we'll start by having a look at what you definitely need to know. We'll distinguish between the CNS and the PNS and that means our central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And we'll also take a look at the central nervous system in more detail. So let's look at the specification first of all. So we need to know the two different nervous systems, the central and peripheral. And then what we'll see as we go along is that there's different sections within there also. So what do we need to know? Well, you've got to be able to outline the structure. And by that, we mean all the different subdivisions, all the different components of the nervous system. You should be able to outline the role of the nervous system. So we're talking then about the purpose of it, its functions, its job, what it does. And that includes the central nervous system, which is consistent of the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system, consistent of somatic and autonomic nervous system. And then as you can see, the autonomic nervous system includes its own subcomponents, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So overall, for each of these nervous systems, you want to be able to describe the structure, describe the role, the purpose and the function. So quite a lot to do and quite a lot of new terminology as well. Instead of just trying to remember what the structure or what the terms are, understanding the purpose of a nervous system will go a long way in helping you talk about it fluently. So what does it do? Well, that helps us respond to changes in our environment whether that be in response to stresses, weather, anything at all. It also enables us to coordinate our actions, our movements, our behaviours, and it relays messages from the brain to the body. And you can see on the diagram on the screen that we can see all our different subcomponents, uh, very separate as they are, they still communicate together very much so. Now, when it comes to the structure of the nervous system, you can see on this really useful tutor to you diagram that there's multiple nervous systems to familiarise yourself with. We've got the CNS, the central nervous system, the PNS, peripheral nervous system, and you can see that they make up our two distinct halves of the nervous system. We've also then got the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. And on the diagram, you can see those sitting right under the peripheral nervous system because that's where you'll find them. In there, we've also got the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, and they sit directly in the autonomic nervous system, which itself sits in the peripheral nervous system. So learning about the structure is, is quite crucial. You could get asked this in your exam. So this diagram on the screen is something that you should really use as a good revision tool. Let's take a look at the central nervous system. So let's focus on the spinal cord and the brain as the two components that make up the central nervous system. So what do you know already about the central nervous system? Well, we know it consists of the brain and spinal cord, but can you consider what you've learned about psychology already on your course so far and think about where you've studied or spoken about the brain and the spinal cord? Jot your answer down and pause the video for two minutes while you write down everything that comes to mind. As we go through the central nervous system together, compare your own answers with those on screen and add anything in that you haven't included yourself. So the central nervous system we know already consists of the brain and the spinal cord. So there are two components. The brain provides conscious awareness and is involved in all of our psychological processes. Now, we all know what our brain is responsible for, but in terms of your exams, the key thing to mention there is about conscious awareness. And that's the thing that separates it from other parts of the nervous system. There are four main regions of the brain, and this includes two language centres as well, which you'll study in more detail in later weeks of the biopsychology series. So let's take a look at the four main lobe regions of the brain. On the diagram, you can see that we've got the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, the temporal lobe, 
Right underneath, we've got the cerebellum and the brainstem. But for now, we're just going to focus on those lobes, as you can see in the coloured areas of the diagram. I want you to have a think. Maybe you know already, maybe you need to use some resources. Either is fine. But which of these five areas are responsible for the following? Which one's responsible for looking at something like road hazards? Which one's responsible for any physical pain, such as stumping your toe in a chair? Which one are you using mostly when you're looking at university courses to join? And which one will process information when you listen to a podcast? You may need to pause here for a couple of minutes while you have a look at your resources or even hazard a good guess. So pause the video for two minutes at least while you have a good think. Hopefully you did okay. Here's some answers for you to compare yours to. So looking for road hazards, we'd use the occipital lobe because that's the part of the brain that is processing any visual information that we see. The parietal lobe is our somatosensory area, so it picks up on all that sensory information from the environment. So that's what's going to process our pain. We would use our frontal lobe for choosing university courses more associated with decision making. And we would use the temporal lobe for listening to a podcast. And this is the part of the brain that helps us understand what we hear. So the brain stem you can see underneath connects the brain to the spinal cord, which is our other component of the central nervous system. And this controls involuntary processes, things like breathing, blinking, and so on. Let's take a look at the spinal cord, the other component of the central nervous system. Now, this transfers messages to and from the brain to the rest of the body. So you can see on the diagram on the screen that it's connected to the brain, but we've also got nerves coming all the way off the spinal cord, all the way through our body. So it's also responsible for reflexes like pulling your hand away from a hot object, maybe a hot eye and you're touching accidentally, and also standing quickly if you sit on something sharp. It's also responsible for that sensation if you prick your finger or a needle or anything like that by accident. Now earlier on I showed you a diagram that helped you visualise the structure of the nervous system. So I want you to pause here for one minute while you recreate in your notes the structure of the nervous system flowchart. And let's see how you get on with recalling the terms, the correct structure and order in which these present themselves. Let's see how you did. So check your answer versus the diagram on the board. So we should have the nervous system at the top. And then because we've got two different nervous systems, we want two different branches. We're going to take you to the central nervous system on one. So hopefully you got that right with the subcomponents, the spine and the brain underneath. The other branch of the nervous system is our peripheral nervous system. And these subcomponents are somatic nervous system and autonomic. And then hopefully you managed to get the sympathetic and parasympathetic in there as well.